Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well and safe and are back at home wherever you are having a good finals week. My research was focused around academic discourse about radicalization, which is the process that drives people and organizations to use extremist violence like terrorism to achieve their goals. And also I focus on how radicalization occurred in the Northern Irish Civil Rights Movement from around 1967 to 1972. There aren't were not a lot of historical sources available for my research, so I used works from a variety of different fields, including psychology, sociology, political science, and conflict studies. Like terrorism, there is a lot of controversy and ambiguity surrounding the term radicalization, its, de its definition, and many other terms related to it. While the academic discourse contains many varied opinions and arguments about this, there are several key principles and themes that unite the literature. Most scholars would agree that radicalization is a complex phenomenon that entails people or groups of people adopting extreme beliefs, which in turn often drives violent actions motivated by those beliefs. They all agree that it's not a linear process, that holding extreme beliefs will not inevitably drive a person to use terrorism, and that this can slide both ways with people fading in and out of extremist beliefs. But there's a general agreement that having radical ideas is a prerequisite for violent action. Many academics agree that the radicalization process occurs at two different levels. On the one hand, individuals radicalize and decide to join a terrorist group or use violence. On the other, groups such as organizations or ethnic or religious communities collectively radicalize and endorse the use of violence. Most scholars agree that the group radicalization almost always happens before individual radicalization. For example, Irish Catholics were not engaging in lone wolf terrorist attacks during the Troubles or during the early stages of the Troubles and were only using terrorism in the larger framework of the IRA. Lots of similar factors drive both forms of radicalization, such as the breakdown in relationships between different identity groups or with the government, the existence of grievance or victimization narratives, including oppression, loss of family members, things like that, connections with extremist groups, like having friends or family be part of an organization, intramovement competition in which different groups compete for support among the same community, and a variety and combination of all of the above. Through these observations, scholars provide a general framework for recognizing and understanding the radicalization process, and this framework is also present throughout scholarly discourse about radicalization in the early stages of the Troubles. Some academics focus on group radicalization during this period, especially with the organization The People's Democracy. Arguing that competition with more moderate civil rights groups for support among Catholics drove it to endorse more and more radical ideas in order to gain support. This culminated in its rejection of nonviolent protest and its acceptance of militant republicanism. Other authors examine the Stormont Parliament's role in the PD's radicalization, citing the failure of nonviolence to cha create change and also Stormont's inability to protect Catholics from loyalist violence as driving the PD's turn to extremism. Other authors look at the reasons driving individual radicalization, examining grievance narratives, such as loss of family members or loyalist and government oppression, as well as the role of family and personal connections in radicalizing people and pushing them into the provisional IRA. We can see these factors displayed in Patrick Keefe's book, where family heritage, victimization, and the failure of nonviolence drove the Price sisters into joining the provost and using terrorism. Other sources demonstrate how the breakdown of the relationships between the Catholic community, the Protestants, the Stormont Parliament, and the British Army drove the Catholics to see violence as the only way to solve their problems. The dismissal of Stormont and Bloody Sunday showcase how Northern Irish government and Westminster failed the Catholic community and how a Catholic loss of faith in these institutions encouraged radicalization into terrorism. Were we in different circumstances, I would have expanded my research by looking at memoirs, interviews, and other primary sources from former IRA members to explain why Irish Catholics resorted to terrorism. I would also have liked to investigate the factors driving loyalist radicalization in order to gain a full understanding of the process as it occurred during the conflict in Northern Ireland. Thank you guys for listening, and the best of luck to all of you in finals.